ladies and gentlemen, to RLCS Overtime, your one-stop shop for all things Rocket League and RLCS Esports. I'm your host, Wave Punk. I've got a findable carpet at James Spot and a Quinn Lobdell here with me. Guys, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Quinn? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I want to know. I want to know. Actually, you did just ask. I want to know. I didn't mean to. I asked. I asked this question on the on the summer series, and you didn't answer it. Why is your name? By the way, hi, Carpet. You haven't said anything yet. Hi. You doing good? I'm doing good? great. Okay, cool. I have to ask Thank this question. You. Why is your name Mike, but your gamer tag is Quinn Lobdell? I thought it was Mike. Yeah, my name is actually Michael. It said Mike. So, uh, whatever you want to correct that. Um, yeah, it all kind of started because <laughs> I was just kind of trolling one of my buddies who, uh, his name's actually Quinn Lobdell. And, uh -huh. um, you know, I never really expected to be a pro Rocket League player or a personality or a caster or have any kind of success or public appearance. <laughs> hey, you're still working on the success part anyway, so. <laughs> oh, well, man. I am still a land boy. Yes, no, a I'm better kidding. Rocket League player than you ever were. Then let's 1v1. <laughs> we'll do it later, all right? I got you. Story. Didn't hear Either story. way, didn't see you at RLCS. Um, <laughs> oh my God. I just, I just kept my name as Quinn Lobdell, right? Because at one point, everyone's just like, hey, Quinn, you want to play? You want to play? It's like, people are recognizing me by Quinn. I was on stream as Quinn. And if I rebranded myself, it just wasn't going to be the greatest thing ever. So unfortunately for the real Quinn Lobdell out there, if you Google Quinn Lobdell, it will show me first. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, it it doesn't he play as Michael Baruzzi, though? Yeah, he plays oh my under gosh. my name. So if there's, you ever want to There's so much hoodwinking going it. on. So much just, I, I don't even understand. But the Summer <laughs> Series. Glad I got that out of the way. The Summer Series was great. We had an awesome time. We can look at the bracket, how everything panned out last weekend. A lot of fun here. NRG going to get the sweep over, set to destroy. The only series that wasn't a sweep there in that first round was Denial and Take 3. That was an awesome series. It was lots of fun to watch those guys go at it. But NRG, Take 3, the Muffin Men, and G2 Esports rounded out our top four. And we were in for a wild ride. You can see there at the top, G2 sweeping NRG. Nobody expected that to happen. We all predicted it to go the other way. And NRG G though dropping to G2 what what games guys and we, we can we can start off by talking here about NRG versus take three so fantastic series we saw take three take one of the games here but it was NRG ultimately that was able to, to, to knock it out of the park and make it into the finals now, there was a, a lot of really fun series to watch but uh, right out of the gate NRG looking like the NRG of old uh, taking it to this new uh, take three roster that had Chrome as a sub instead of Espeon Espeon obviously at the desk with us but uh, NRG, they they kept doing what they were doing. Mm. They really just don't stop. They don't slow down, and it's something that they have figured out what to do. And I think picking up Garrett G was one of the best decisions they could have made. He is yep. it's an individual, just such a strong player. His striking is phenomenal. So they don't really have to rely on any one player too much because we know Jacob does, as me and Wave like to say, oh. hashtag Jacob things. Oh my gosh. Fire burner, <laughs> you can't question it, right? You got Fireboy and the Batmobile in the back defending like a monster, and then add Garrett G to the mix, what do you got? There was hardly any close series mm -hmm. in this. This was yep. like a lot of blowouts. Mm -hmm. uh, like well, even the Splice that's series. That's not necessarily fair. Yeah, they I were, mean, they were not close in games. They're close in scores. But the scores, like the games were like one game, one goal differences inside mm -hmm. the games. But, I mean, if you can't win a game, you can't win a game, right? Yeah. But the, the series were very decisive. But like you're saying, even that Muffin Men Splice game, Splice put up a fight every single oh, yeah. game, even though they lost 3-0, but that denial take three game or series was definitely the closest. But in, uh -huh. NRG and G2, that's who everybody wanted to see in the yeah. finals, and that's <laughs> ended up how it how it played out. So it was fun to see. Yeah, it was crazy watching NRG getting the, getting the win there, and dropping one game on their way to the finals. And we're like, ah, oh, they're still in top form, still clearly the number one team in North America. And then in the lower bracket, we are not the lower bracket, the bottom side of the bracket because there is no lower bracket. Single elimination here. We had G2 taking on the Muffin Men, and so we were like, oh, we're not sure how it's going to go. Muffin Men are really really strong here, and G2 in this series didn't look as strong as they had in the series prior or as they did in the series we were about to see after this one, but still able to very cleanly get the win here 4-1. And it comes to endurance, 4-1 is a pretty big spread. It's one mm -hmm. of the best of seven series, which I, I've always felt, at least for us as casters, is a little bit of an endurance match. Yep. So I can only imagine for these players <laughs> that have the actual pressure built onto them. 
and it really just came down to like they, they were playing smart. There were a lot of times, especially towards the end of G2's season, in season three, where oh, they play. got a little oh, slow. Dash pass. Ooh, oh. What a play that so was. Good. There was so many, we had so many. This, this this tournament was exemplified by crazy pass plays like that, and then also some of the most beautiful own goals we have ever seen, which I don't think you'll see here in the highlight. <laughs> Moses, but yeah. Torment and Moses both had some like ridiculous Vince own had goal. a crazy Was, was Vince the one that was like, across the air? Moses, Moses had one where he whiffed the save, Mm -hmm. And then he turned around and like scored it on his own net. And then Vince had the one where it was yeah. a pinch, and he went up to try to save it, uh, or he it's went up to try to clear it because it wasn't going in, and he just redirected it right into the corner. <laughs> and that one was also that tied up in not the game. Not top five play. <laughs> yeah, but it's, the not top five. It tied up the game Untrained with, with the denial in game five. Yeah, it was, was like, oh dear, it's all over. But then yeah. they're they're able to bounce back and, and they get the, they get the win by one goal and go to face off against Energy, where they drop four one. Better luck to them next time. But it was NRG and G2 in our finals. Exactly the match we've all been waiting for. And everybody, except for Axel Toss, was predicting the 4-0 sweep of NRG. And the exact opposite happened. This blew my mind. Yeah, the NRG, or G2, NRG, two titans in North America. G2 obviously had a struggle of a season last time. But this was the passing G2 that we saw mm. early in the season three. They, they really started to shine, especially Rizzo and JNAPS together. They were scoring so many sick goals, but Kronovi was a, a huge key to that. He had six assists in this series and uh, really set up JNAPS and Rizzo quite a bit. Something really awesome to watch during the series was just how patient G2 was in contrast with NRG. We saw NRG rushing, making mistakes, and G2 picked up on that and started to play even slower. We saw Rizzo just beating all three of the NRG members before he's even crossed the halfway line, for instance. It was just great, great gameplay and uh, tactical decisions coming from G2, and that's why they were so successful. In the first three games, they're all one goal games before G2 just put the pedal to the metal in game number four. But even in the previous series, Rizzo had two overtime goals. G2 was just Call them under pressure, and mm. they just and, and that paid off for them going into this finals. And even though those first three games were all close, they still swept four games to nothing over NRG. Yeah, no, nobody would have. Well, we we saw we saw eleven to five, just complete outscoring of G two over NRG. And, and and thoughts from you guys on you you talked about there was there was a lot of defensive mistakes that they were taking advantage of. Was was G two forcing these mistakes, or was NRG? Did they just just somehow fall apart in between the semifinals and the finals. I think that G2 definitely, you know, when you just keep playing straight all the way into the finals, that is an advantage. NRG taking a, a minor break, obviously having already qualified and just waiting mm. for their game. So G2 coming in hot. Uh, another thing especially was just the fact that G2 was really all three of those players turning on all at once. And once yeah. Once NRG started to miss a few shots, I don't know if you guys remember it, but NRG was yeah, just were getting struggling. Hitting post. so, I don't want to say unlucky, but they well, could not have gotten any there, was least, there was at least one instance scoring. when it bounced off like every single post and then out. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, you I, could not have come closer to making the shot and still missing, you yeah. know? And not only that, too, but the Rizzo 50-50s with Fireburner. Mm -hmm. Well, like, first off, Fireburner almost mm -hmm. never loses 50-50s, but twice Rizzo just pinched it with fire yeah, and yeah, it just I went remember. from his own all the way yeah. into the net. That was, that was so precise. It, it almost felt like, like once when I was casting that game, it just felt like G2 was just playing counterplay. They know exactly what NRG is going to do. Obviously, they're the team to beat right now. They're the North American champions, and they know, mm -hmm. hey, this is probably our most difficult series. If we can beat these guys, we know we're a roster to stay, especially now with all the mishappenings that's going on and who knows who's going to be who by season four. Yep. But it felt like they like, you know what? We know what NRG plays. Let's just counterplay them. Let's get in between them. Let's just put somebody always in the way of the passing plays. Let's not let Jacob do Jacob things. Let's contest Fireburner in a way that it's hard for him to do 50-50s. They were just stifling NRG, which you generally don't see, because G2 is a team that usually in their own right can just perf do their thing and win. Mm -hmm. But it almost was like, you know what, let's just stop them, and then the win will come. And that's mm -hmm. how it felt. Yeah, the question was, can G2 come back? Is this the season where G2 can show up in the form we've been wanting to see them? Which looks good so far in the first summer series. We'll get to see them some more as the seasons, as this offseason goes on and as we get into season four. But that'll wrap it up here for our summer series wrap up. Congratulations to G2 for winning. And coming up next, we're going to go over all the roster changes that have been happening in the offseason. Should be good. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.